Honestly, sometimes it's really hard to find any words on these guys. At the Conservative Party conference in Manchester in England, Cabinet Minister Michael Gove claimed that the infamous Brexit campaign promise of £350 million a week for the NHS had been delivered. Well, this claim is definitely widely disputed and the 350 million figure was based on the net amount of money that the UK would no longer have to pay to the EU after Brexit. However, the UK government has since said that this money is being used to pay for other things, such as the costs of Brexit itself. By the way, it was never 350. In addition, the NHS has not received an extra 350 million a week as a result of Brexit. In fact, the NHS has been facing significant funding cuts in recent years. In 2021, the government announced a £36 billion increase in funding for the NHS over three years. However, this was less than what the NHS had asked for, and it did not come close to offsetting the cuts that the NHS has faced in previous years. Gove's claim that the £350 million promise has been delivered is just nuts. Fact-checking organizations have called it false or misleading, and opposition politicians have accused Gove of lying to the British people. And even some Conservative MPs have expressed their skepticism about the claim. But despite the criticism, Gove has stood by his claim. He has said that the government is committed to increasing funding for the NHS and that the 350 million figure was a legitimate estimate of the potential benefits of Brexit. Whatever this guy is taking, I want to try that. However, Gove's claim is at odds with the reality of the NHS today. The NHS is facing a number of challenges, including staff shortages, long waiting lists and a lack of funding, of course. It's clear that the £350 million promise has not been delivered and that the NHS needs more support from the government. Brexit campaigners have never been able to substantiate the claim of extra money going to the NHS, a claim they made because of the contribution to the UK made to the EU for being part of the single market and the customs union. The chairman of the Office for Budget Responsibility said leaving the EU would likely cut GDP growth by 4% and the chairman of the Office for Budget Responsibility said it's a hundred billion pound loss. And even Nigel Farage, he was unofficially in the Leave campaign later said he never would have made this NHS claim and it was one of the mistakes the official Vote Leave team made during the referendum. The claim that the UK sends £350 million a week to the EU was first made by the Vote Leave campaign during the 2016 Brexit referendum. The campaign used the figure prominently in its materials, including on a bus that toured the country. The claim was based on the net amount of money that the UK paid to the EU in 2015, which it wasn't, by the way. This figure is calculated by subtracting the rebates and other payments that the UK receives from the EU from the total amount that it pays in. But then it wouldn't have been 350, but 160. However, the 350 million figure was misleading in a number of ways. First, it did not take into account the fact that the UK received a number of benefits from being a member of the EU, such as access to the single market and funding for research and development. Second, the 350 million pound figure was based on a one-off payment that the UK made to the EU in 2015. This payment was not part of the UK's regular budget contributions to the EU. And third, the £350 million figure did not take into account the costs of Brexit itself. These costs include the costs of negotiating the new trade deal with the EU and the costs of setting up, setting up new regulatory systems. Despite the fact that the £350 million figure was misleading, it was very effective in persuading voters to vote to leave the EU. A poll conducted after the referendum found that 52% of voters believed that the UK sent £350 million a week to the EU, which is not true. Since the referendum, the UK government has abandoned the £350 million promise. The government has admitted that the money will not be used to fund the NHS and that the NHS will not receive any extra money as a result of Brexit. The £350 million promise is now widely seen as a lie. It is a reminder of the misinformation and disinformation that was spread during the Brexit campaign from the Leave side. In reality, the UK economy has lost billions of pounds because of Brexit. 
and I already quoted the OBR and the 4% uh, in GDP loss. And uh, this is 100 billion pounds a year in lost output and 40 billion pounds a year in lost public revenues. The economic costs of Brexit are due to a number of factors and one of them is the reduced trade with the EU. The EU is the UK's largest trading partner and Brexit has made it more difficult and expensive for UK businesses to trade with the EU. And this has led to a decrease in UK exports and imports. And they don't even have implemented the checks yet. And then the reduced investment. Businesses invested less in the UK due to the uncertainty caused by Brexit. This has led to a decrease in economic growth. And there was the weaker pound. The value of the pound has fallen against other currencies since the Brexit referendum. This has made imports more expensive already and has reduced the value of UK exports. And of course the cost for businesses. Businesses have had to incur additional costs to comply with new regulations and paperwork as a result of Brexit. This has reduced their profits and made them less competitive. The economic costs of Brexit are being felt by almost all sectors of the UK economy. Businesses are struggling to recruit and retain workers and consumers are facing higher prices. The government is also facing a budget shortfall due to the loss of tax revenue from businesses and individuals. The full economic impact of Brexit is still unfolding, but it is clear that it is costing the UK economy billions of pounds. The UK government has said that it is committed to mitigating the economic costs of Brexit, but it is unclear how they want to do it in the end. Nevertheless, if you want to see another video right now, that's here in the end screen, or want to visit my newest channel, Outside Views STFC, which is doing really well, it's up there. Anyway, I'll see you there. I'll be back.